My name is Joseph. I'm a research chemist at Cal State Northridge. I like to play guitar as a hobby. Music is one of my biggest passions. I also enjoy going on bicycle rides. I just love the outdoors. I grew up in a dysfunctional family. My father was basically never home and my mom had to work full time to fill his shoes. Because of that, it really left a big void in my heart. A longing for parental affection, longing for approval from authority figures, people older than me. My uh, mom and dad divorced when I was around 10, and that's when we stopped going to church. I stopped believing in Jesus Christ. I actually identified as an atheist for the next several years. For most of my early teens, I would seek relationships for refuge from my emptiness. And it was there I really first experienced love and affection. But I realized that these women couldn't fill the God-shaped hole in my heart. Eventually, there came to a point where I was kind of distraught, hopeless. And at age 21, I had my first alcoholic drink. A few weeks after that, I got intoxicated for the first time. I realized that drinking alcohol can numb my mind and take me away from the troubles of life. The next year or so of my life marked a really dark season. Even at work, I would um, come into the lab, you know, intoxicated. One time I was at work, came back from a lunch break, you know, I had had a few drinks. My boss came in and he actually smelled the alcohol in my breath. He basically asked me how I was doing and I don't know what it was. I just felt like I should be honest with him. I had opened up to him about my alcohol addiction and I just needed to find help somewhere. I just remember the response that he gave to me was nothing but grace and love. And he said, he's gonna help me get through this. He had mentioned a, a recovery program called Celebrate Recovery at Rocky Peak. My immediate response was visceral. I always thought, you know, what's the use of these programs? Why can't, you know, people just stop drinking? What's the problem with them? Just to show him that I was serious about recovery, about getting better, I agreed to go. It's so the first day at Celebrate Recovery. I was just filled with pride and I just felt like I didn't belong there. And the only thing I enjoyed was the uh, cheese and crackers after open share. I started attending regularly at the Thursday night meetings. After they had mentioned that they had a step study going on, I agreed to enroll. You know, I didn't know how I would be treated. I didn't know how people would look at me, but this step study was really the first time I learned to be open and vulnerable. I actually met people that I can confide in, be honest with. The path to recovery was a lot more difficult than I had thought it would be. A few days after receiving my 30-day chip in sobriety, I had started into drinking again. This time it was actually even worse, and it seemed to me like I just couldn't get a grip on it. I got a text message it was an invitation to an event. After a few drinks, I found myself in a precarious situation. I had made this person angry and this person was really threatening to me. And I felt like my life was in danger. And I got into my car and drove. I was still drunk. So I got home full of anxiety and felt so ashamed of who I was. I'd become the very thing that I despised with tears in my eyes and trepidation and trembling, I just fell face down and surrendered my life over to God. I felt free. I felt, after all these years of just forsaking Him, I felt like God was there the entire time and He had never left me. And He was telling me, I've been waiting for you. When I first started coming to Celebrate Recovery, I was just so filled with pride. I thought I was surrounded by a whole bunch of people who just couldn't get a grip on their lives. But now I realize that I too don't have a grip on my own life, which is why I need to surrender my will over to Jesus Christ, who is the only higher power who can free me from my addictions, my hurts, my habits, my hang-ups. I'm no longer in hiding. I'm no longer ashamed of being open to other people about my issues. If I fail, there's grace for me. If I succeed, there's celebration with those around me. It surprises me how sitting in a room full of people in a circle, just sharing about your own struggles and your own issues can lead to transformation. 